It is a unique place. It is a fragile place. It is a nutritionally rich, productive nursery for hundreds of living things. And it is at the center of California's water politics. Meet Brett Baker. Brett lives at ground zero in the increasingly nasty war over California water. He's a pear farmer in the Delta, born and raised in the farmhouse that sits just across the road from a part of the Sacramento River. Brett knows a lot about pears and a lot about the Delta. Got a good history here. The climate is just perfectly suited for growing pears and we've been doing that here for over 150 years now. And, uh, We've got big goofy dogs that grow well here too. Um, and little dogs too. <laughs> yeah, little ones. She's a she's a kick. She run, she rules the roost. She's in charge here. Don't let don't don't get confused. Um, get down, get down. No. Um, get out of here. Get out of here. Go on, go on. Um, you know we're stuck in the middle, right in the middle of it. In the middle of the biggest controversy in the state, probably uh, for the last hundred years and the next hundred years. Uh, this, this is gonna define how our state's developed and um, what, what, it, what it looks like for future generations. And it's a you know, huge conversation topic for everybody around here. This is Bill Jennings. He's the chairman and executive director of the California Sport Fishing Protection Alliance. When it comes to protecting the Delta, he is an admitted pain in the ass. Well, we're a nonprofit organization that was established in uh, 1983 to um, uh, protect California's fisheries. I think of us as an equal opportunity litigator. We'll, we'll sue anybody. I mean, you know, right now I, we've got lawsuits against the state board and the regional board and, 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 and DWR and the Bureau. And, and um, we're a general pain in the ass to most bureaucracies. This is what this comes down to. No water for the farmers because of this fish. Is that what it is? This fish here? We got to stop, uh, you know, choosing the smelt and the salmon. All this noise, all this hand wringing, all this demagoguery, is because of the work that this kindly, mild mannered, unimposing gentleman started in the 1970s. We're standing at the edge of the Yolo Causeway with Dr. Peter Moyle, professor of fish biology at the University of California, Davis. I came out here as an assistant professor in the early 1970s. As all the good assistant professors, you look around for low-hanging fruit, the things you can study. So I got hooked up with the Department of Fish and Game. I went out in their uh, boats, and one of the most abundant fish that they were catching were Delta smelt. And I said, oh, this is perfect. I analyzed all the existing data and said, it looks like, to me like the smelt populations have crashed. Something's going on. So, I did what I thought was the sensible thing, the natural thing to do, being very naive about these things. I brought it to the Fish and Game Commission, they turned it down. Then the local chapter of the American Fishery Society took my position, revised it a bit so it fit the federal standards, submitted it to the Fish and Wildlife Service, and the smelt got listed. This is the Aquarium of the Bay at Pier 39 in San Francisco, a recent acquisition of the Bay Institute, where we meet Dr. Christina Swanson, She's the chief scientist and executive director of the Bay Institute, an organization involved in a never-ending struggle to protect and restore the San Francisco Bay and the inland watersheds that are critical for a healthy estuary. It's very clear that uh, overall ecological condition of the San Francisco Bay estuary has been declining for decades. There are a variety of reasons, including reductions in freshwater inflow to the estuary, water pollution, loss of important habitats like tidal marshes, and increasing prevalence of harmful invasive species in the estuary. The end result has been that for many of the fish species that live in the bay or migrate through the bay, their population abundance has been declining. California's Delta was once a 400,000-acre tidal marsh with extensive uplands at the confluence of the Sacramento and San Joaquin rivers. Like most of us, the Delta is not what it used to be. In the late 1880s and early 1900s, the natural system was diked and channelized, converted into agricultural islands. The Sacramento and San Francisco Bay Delta 
is the largest and most important estuary on the west coast of both North and South America. An estuary is part salt water and part fresh water. Fresh water from rivers far away mix with the salt water coming in from the Pacific Ocean, creating a nutrient-rich environment that baby salmon, baby crabs, and hundreds of other species must have to start their lives. This whole estuary is unusual in that the estuary portion, where the river meets the salt water of the ocean, is actually very far inland. It doesn't happen at the coast. And it's absolutely unique. So you have these two rivers coming in that form the delta. Then the delta ends at sort of a narrowing area. Our delta starts out wide because it's created by the confluence of two rivers coming from opposite directions and narrows to a, a narrow confluence where the two rivers join. Uh, enters the San Francisco Bay and then in fact goes through a couple more bottlenecks, uh, most uh, prominently Carquina Straits and then the Golden Gate before the water actually gets out to the ocean. What that does, it makes it enormously complex hydrologically. It also means that historically it had extremely diverse habitats in it and was extremely productive. Today, the delta is extremely stressed. The ecological health of the delta and the upstream portion of the estuary is in very, very poor condition if the ecosystem is largely collapsed as a result of multiple problems. Clearly, the estuary needs to have increased freshwater flows. Clearly, we need to address our, our pollution problems, virtually none of which have been addressed. We've got contaminants coming into the system from all different sources. We've got them coming in from a big, big source, our ag fields. They bring in not only pesticides and fertilizers, but, but salts as well. You reduce an estuary's freshwater flows uh, by more than 30 percent, uh, you, you start to cause irreparable damage uh, to the estuary. We're there and past that point. The estuary will, as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a place, will continue to exist. It's a question as to, to what it's comprised of. I mean, this is one of the, the, the richest, most diverse um, e ecological uh, uh, cornucopias in, on, on, on the planet. Are you going to turn it into to where it's home for cockroaches and carp? The delta is not going to die. It's going to stay alive as a functioning ecosystem. It's just not going to be a system that we like. And it means that we will be having continual fights over endangered species and so forth. So if we want to create a delta that favors the species, not only fish, but waterfowl and plants and a whole bunch of other things, it does need to work better. It's clear that pollution from farms and cities are part of the reason for the delta's troubled condition. But so are plants and fish. Ironically, these invasive species are doing so well because of the very reason salmon and the delta smelt are not.